Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Umar Birosli. Uh, Matrix number 2113677. Uh, so today, uh, I on behalf of my teammates, uh, our team which is uh, the defender, uh, will gonna be presenting about uh, the compression of uh, constitutional status, position and power of the Malay rulers before independence and after independence as in the federal constitution. Uh, before that, uh, let's go to the overview or the uh, Before that, uh, we go to the overview of our presentation uh, Which is, um, we go to the introduction And second is the constitutional status and position before independence The third one, constitutional status and position after independence uh, Number four, power of Malay rulers before independence Number five, power of Malay rulers after the independence And finally, a conclusion Uh, so uh, first uh, we go to the introduction So uh, the constitution is a fundamental law in every single country throughout the entire world So um, a constitution is uh, a greater of fundamental principle or established precedent That constitute the legal basis of uh, polity, organization or other type of entity um, And commonly determine how the entity is to be governed so, uh, when this principle are uh, written down into a single document or set of legal documents, uh, those documents may be said to embody a written constitution. Uh, uh, if they are encompassed in a single comprehensive document, it is said to embody a codified constitution. So, uh, the constitution of the United Kingdom is a notable example of uh, an uncodified constitution where it is writ instead written in a numerous fundamental acts of a legislature, court cases or treaties. Uh, on the other hand, the Federal Constitution of Malaysia is the example of a written constitution which is used to govern Malaysia up until today. So, um, the Federal Constitution of Malaysia is the Supreme Negotiation of Malaysia and consists of 183 articles, 183 articles in total. The Malaysian Constitution has a long history and has many processes in the making of the constitution. It was first started during the Malay Sultanate's time where there uh, was a concept of rulership at that time. And according to uh, one of the British uh, resident, uh, R.O. Winstead, the Melaka Sultanate had a highly developed legal code called the Undang Undang Melaka. He referred to it as the first constitution in Malaya. It was first approved in 1957 as the Constitution of the Federation of Malaya and amended in the 1963 to become the Constitution of Malaysia. It is a written legal document that was influenced by the Independence Constitution of 1957 and the Federation of Malaya Agreement 1948. So, uh, the Federation was formerly known as the Federation of Malaya and when the state of Sabah, Sarawak and Singapore joined the Federation, it took its current name, which is uh, Malaysia. So, uh, the constitution has been a very important piece of our country since the early beginning of it, of it. Therefore, in this paper, we will compare the constitution status, position and power of the Malay rulers before independence and after independence as in the federal constitution. Uh, so, uh, let's go to the second, po second uh, point which is uh, constitution status and position before the, the independence day. So, uh, before Medeka or Independence Day, consist constitutional status and position was not really clear as there are many countries that have colonized the Federation of Malaya such as British, Portuguese, Netherlands and Japan. And during the colonization of each of them, each of them had their own rules and regulation. So, uh, before Medeka, there are five levels in which the constitution is made of and um, this shows the status and position of the constitution before Merdeka. It consists of the British rule, the Japanese rule, the British military administration, the Malaya Union and the Federation of Malaya. Each of the rules has their own jurisdiction based on the countries. These rulers are what govern the Federation of Malaya at that time and influence our constitution today and have uh, helped us to make our constitution. So, uh, before World War II, uh, the British colonized Malaysia and introduced the British rule which consists of direct rule and indirect rule. So the direct rule is that they had complete jurisdiction and sovereignty over the strait settlements uh, which compromised Malacca, Penang and Singapore. Uh, when they became crown colonies of concession, the, government of, the governor of the strait settlement acted under the authority of the Secretary of State for the colonies who in turn was responsible to the British Parliament. Uh, the indirect rule is that the resolution system has been introduced over the Malay state. The state council 
The State Council was also introduced with executive, legislative and judicial power. Each of the state that have the resident is protected state and the resident can interfere with the administration of the Sultan of each state. During this time, there was no constitution, constitutional monarchy. The Sultan or the King has absolute power. However, the establishment of the residential system has become the influence to the constitu constitutional monarchy in our country today. So, um... Next, uh, the British Military Administration, or as known as BMA, was the interim military government established in Malaya during the period from Japanese surrender on 15 August 1955 to restoration of civilian rule on 1 April 1946. Uh, for your information, the 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 reason of this um, uh, Japanese surrendering because uh, the bomb because uh, the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So uh, when uh, the British came back. Um, and govern the uh, Malaysian state, they established the Malayan Union, which included Malacca, Penang, and Malay state under the Union. So, uh, they had previous governed the peninsula as a unitary state. Because the Malays received no privilege and immigrants, they were automatically granted full, uh, full citizenship. Many Malays rejected the Malayan Union and its policy. Uh, this Malayan Union also posed a challenge to the Malays at that. And then this would result in the Federation of Malaya being founded in 1948. Because uh, many many uh, people just doesn't like the Malay Union, so uh, the British decided that they will do uh, they will continue with the Federation of Malaya. So uh, the Federation of Malaya, uh, the rule the ruler will administer power with assistance from the state executive council while the council of state presided over by a chief minister who was selected by a ruler exercised legislative, legislative power so uh, the administration was headed at the federal level by a british high commissioner who used federal executive council to help him in carrying out carrying out his executive duties and the federal legislative council wielded legislative authority and later the doctrine of separation of powers in our constitution was influenced by his separation of power uh, i think that's all of my part next we go to the uh, afik part so uh, before we go in detail regarding the position of the constitution firstly we need to look at the history on how the constitution was constructed so on uh, 31st august 1957 Tunku Abdul Rahman has declared that the independence for Malaya and announced the date of independence as Bandar Hile Malacca after he returned from London. So for the Malaysian independence, the Reed Commission that's headed by Lord Reed was set up in order to draw up the constitution. So the commission has amended few times from June to October 1956. Out of uh, 131 written once is drawing up of the constitution framework Malay rulers and the alliance so the federal legislative council had accepted and approved by the constitution on uh, 15 august 1957 and come into effect on uh, 27 august 1957 so uh, the fundamental principle of the malaysian constitution is based on the monarchy and democracy system. So um, after the independence, uh, the name of Malaya was changed from Malaya to Malaysia. Not only the change in terms of name, but in terms of rule and also law also changed after, after the independence. So uh, the constitution is the supreme law of Malaysia and any law that complete the federal constitution which is void to extent of the inconsistency. It is based on the Article 4, Subsection 1 of the Federal Constitution, uh, which stated that the Constitution is a supreme law of the Federation, and any law passed after Merdeka, which is inconsistent with the Constitution, with Constitution, shall to the extent of the inconsistency be void. So one based on uh, this rule uh, one of the legal scholar uh, known as Casey Ware he said that constitution is a nation's entire system of government the sets of rules that create and control or govern the government 
So let's move on to the first element with regard to the position of the constitution after the Merdeka. So uh, the constitution established the principle of the constitutional monarchy based on the parliamentary democracy. So under this uh, principle, the, the young Petuala Agung was recognized as the head of the state based on the article 32 of the federal constitution. So the role of the YDPA is as the head of Islam in four states ruled by appointed governors in the three federal territories as well as in his own state. So uh, for this role, he is advised by the state Islamic Affairs Council in each of the states. So the another role is that he is a commander in chief of the Federation Armed Force. As such, he is the highest, highest ranking officer in the military chain of command based on Article uh, 41 of the Federal Constitution. So, uh, a constitution by applying the doctrine. So, we respect to the second element with regard to uh, the position of the constitution. A constitution by applying the doctrine of separation of power has established the main bodies of the government. There are three methods of government, which is the legislature, executive, and also the judiciary. So uh, these three organs of the government apply the principle of check and balance in the application. So meaning that uh, they can play their role freely without any interruption from the other bodies and also to prevent the one body or one office to control too much power. As we know, the role of the legislature is to enact the law while the executive is to apply the law and lastly the role of the judiciary is to interpret the law so hence from the establishment of three organs of the government it's me it may make the administration of the country become systematic so uh, for the last element uh, with regard to the position and status of the Malay constitution is uh, we will discuss uh, regarding the Malay Adat or the rule before and after the independence. So with regard to Malay Adat, uh, before the independence, the custom was the dominant source of law in Malaysia. So uh, for the Malay community, custom refer to the composite indigenous Malay Adat enriched by Hindu and Buddhist element and overlaid with the principle of the Shafi'i school of Islam law. So, uh, through Malay Adat custom and the Sharia, known as Islamic law, are distinct the Malays often see them as synonymous. So, that is why the Malay custom is enforced in Sharia courts. However, after the colonialism took root, common law became the dominant law of Malaya, and Malay Adat and Islam were relegated to personal matters only. After the Merdeka, the role of Islamic law in Malay Adat has been uh, gradually enhanced and given a statutory basis in the Sharia enactments of all the states and in some other laws. So uh, the custom is occasionally elevated to the status of law by judicial recognition if the custom meets the criteria of morality, reasonableness and justice in the opinion of the courts. Okay, now I will talk about the power of the Malay rulers before and after the independence. Before the, in before the independence, uh, the Malay rulers have the power on Islamic and Malik uh, and the custom matters only. Before the independence, uh, the system used in the Malay state is the residential system. Uh, British introduced uh, the system after the treaties entered into by the Malay rulers and the British itself. Uh, the British appointed uh, a resident who is an advisor for the Malay ruler. Uh, the resident or the advisor wa was appointed by the king or queen of the 
British Empire himself. The advice given by the British resident is binding on all matters except two matters, which is matters relating to Islam and the Malay custom. Other than the two matters, the Malay ruler must follow the advice from the resident. Hence, uh, the statutes or law applicable in other British colony, such as India, is being applied in the Malay state. As for example, the penal code, the contracts of opinion, the criminal procedure code, and the civil procedure code that is being applied in India. Okay, now moving on to the after the independence. Uh, the power of the rulers uh, after the independence can be divided into two, which is which are the act on advice and the other one act on uh, on discretion. Okay, for the first one, uh, act on advice. On the state level, uh, section one, subsection one, and subsection three of the eighth schedule of the federal constitution stated that the ruler shall act on the advice of the executive council of the state section 2 subsection 2b uh, stated that he shall on the advice of the chief minister or Mantrusa, appoint not more than eight nor less than four from among the members of the state legislative assembly as the ex executive council on the federal level uh, article 40 clause 1 uh, stated that the young Deputon Agong shall act on the advice of the cabinet or the or the minister. Article 43, clause 2b uh, uh, stated that the young Deputon Agong shall act on the advice of the prime minister to appoint mi ministers from among the members of either house of the parliament. It can be from the house of representatives or house of senate. According uh, in the Article 3, Clause 5, it is stated that uh, on the issues relating to Islamic matters, the young Deputon Agung shall act on the advice of the Islamic Religious Council. Uh, in Article Article 42, Clause 4, uh, in the issues of granting pardon, the ruler, the young Deputon Agri, and the young Deputon Agung shall act on the advice of the pardons uh, board. For this provision, it is applicable on the, uh, both on state and federal level. The, uh, uh, next, Article 92 uh, relating to the issues regarding uh, the National Development Plan. The Yang Diputan Agong shall be advised by an expert of the committee. Uh, now for the second category is Act on Discretion. Act on discretion also can be divided into state level and federal level. For the federal level, Article 40, Clause 2 stated that the young, young Deputon Agung may act in his discretion in appointing the Prime Minister and withholding the request for dissolution of Parliament by the Prime Minister. Uh, for the state level, it is more or less the same uh, as the federal level, but it has a uh, different jurisdiction. According to uh, Section 2, Subsection 2 of the 8th Schedule of the Federal Constitution, the ruler shall appoint a chief minister who, in his judgment, is likely to command the confidence of the majority of the members of the State Legislative Assembly. That's all from me. Thank you. So, in a conclusion, uh, it can be seen that. After the Merdeka Day, there are many things that have changed, such as in terms of the name of our country, laws, and also the power of the rulers. Previously, the concept of government in our country was based on the, on, uh, the concept of Sultan brought by Sharia Ahlak. <coughs> so at that time, uh, the power of king was abs absolute. However, after several years of colonization, the concept of government changed according to the concept of government brought by the British, which is the concept of constitutional monarchy based on parliamentary democracy. 
In addition, there are main bodies of the government that was established in order to manage the administration of the country such as legislation, executive and also the judiciary. So the important matter which still protected even though the concept of administration was changed, which is uh, with regard to the power of the conference of ruler where it was still secure. So uh, they still, so uh, based on uh, this uh, concept, the conference of ruler is still have the power to maintain uh, the heads and purity of the Islamic religion. I think that's all from my group. Thank you.